A finding that could revive the Ukrainian family tree, a discovery that could change the history of Europe. Facts that were hidden for centuries. St. Sophia Cathedral of Kiev, Vladimir the Great started its construction and Yaroslav the Wise finished it. The father and son built a temple that was destined to be not only the center of the Kiev metropolis, but also one of the most important Christian shrines throughout the entire Europe. Back in their time, the Ruriks were protecting Sofia, and today she preserves their secrets. A skull, a set of vertebral pelvic bones, a collarbone, shoulder blades, three ribs and parts of the lower human extremities. These remains are kept in a sarcophagus in the Cathedral of St. Sofia, and according to researchers, they belong to an extremely beautiful woman. She was quite probably of the Scandinavian origin, considering the features of the skull. The Byzantine tomb is the St. Sophia Cathedral, is more commonly known as the sarcophagus of Yaroslav the Wise, and logically the Kiev prince should be resting there. So why are there bones that belong to, first of all, a woman, and secondly, a woman from Scandinavia? Kyiv, 1936, a scientific committee meets in the Sofia in Kyiv, which had already had the status of a national reserve at that time. The scientist's task was to explore the sarcophagus of Yaroslav the Wise, which had been there since time immemorial. The researchers lifted the lid of the tomb and found a pile of mixed bones. They assembled two separate skeletons from those, male and female. And that was when they found out that there had always been two skeletons in the tomb instead of one. The scientists then returned the remains back to the sarcophagus. In 1939, experts from Leningrad came to Kiev to examine the contents of the sarcophagus. Not only did they examine them on site, but they took all of the remains they found to Leningrad, where they conducted research. The scientists claimed, with almost 100% probability, that one of the skeletons belonged to Yaroslav Volodymyrovich. But the study of the remains of the female bones gave some rather unexpected results. When it was learned that the female skeleton had most likely been of Scandinavian origin, one expert suggested that it was that of the Swedish princess Ingegerd. The Swedish princess Ingegerd is also known as Irina, the wife of Yaroslav the Wise. For centuries, Russian historians claimed that she had been buried in Sofia of Novgorod Cathedral, but under the name of St. Anne. Scientists examined the skeleton in Novgorod and found that the woman buried in that sarcophagus had died at the age of 30, 35. And we know that Yaroslav's wife died much later. This means that the skeleton does not coincide with the historical data. So that means that some other woman, and not the wife of Yaroslav, is buried in Novgorod. And that she actually has nothing to do with Ingegerd. Then why did Russians spread the version that she had been buried there? And why under the name of Anne? After all, even after the baptism, Ingegerd was given the name Irina. The Russian scientists claim that Ingegerd went to Novgorod when she died under the name of Anne. 
a rather strange decision for a prince's wife. The distance between the capital of Kievan Rus and its northern province Novgorod is over 900 kilometers, and there were quite a lot of churches in Kiev at the time. Yaroslav was the prince of Novgorod and Novgorod lands for many years, and he lived there with his wife Ingegerd. At that time, she was in love with the Norwegian prince and had to marry him. Ingegerd had to marry Yaroslav without her consent. It was the tradition in those days to secure a military alliance through marriage. When she was getting married, she had set a condition that her cousin was to go with her. And then there was assumptions that they had a close relationship. Her cousin was always by her side. Historians believe that there was no agreement in personal life between Yaroslav and Irina. She always wanted to visit Novgorod, with which her best memories and emotions were connected. Supposedly, soon before her death, Ingegerd returned there and died as Anne. Soviet and Russian scientists defended that version. However, Swedish sources cast doubt on this fact. There is a university in the city of Uppsala, Sweden, which holds old manuscripts. According to those sources, Ingegerd had never been a religious woman, and the fact that she went to the monastery has a huge question mark hanging over it. She was a completely secular person. The lack of reliable data gives life to myths and legends. Perhaps the lack of accurate information about the year and place of death and the burial of Irina caused the appearance of the Novgorod version. Or maybe it was intentional to increase the credibility of Russia. Those were the assumptions of scientists who, in my opinion, were not engaged in such political issues. Later, it could have been used to show the superiority of Russia over Ukraine. Mikola Karamzin is one of those who worked on historical falsifications in favor of Tsarist Russia back in the 19th century. He was the one who gave impetus to the rise of Novgorod. It fit the overall ideological framework that the statehood itself was brought from the north, that is, from the territory of Russia. The rise of the state took place only after a wise ruler came from the north, who took the throne here and educated the neighboring princes. Apparently, Russian historians were not satisfied that the name of one of the most famous rulers of Kievan Rus, Yaroslav the Wise, was connected with Novgorod. They wanted to improve the stating of the city in yet another way. And the legend about the burial of Ingegerd in Novgorod contributed to that considerably. It was very disadvantageous for them that Ingegerd had been buried here, so that was probably the reason for the appearance of the Virgin with her burial at the St. Sophia Cathedral in Novgorod. The survey results of 1940 were like a bolt for the blue. They did not fit the normal, coordinated and carefully polished Moscow concept. So it is logical that the results had practically no publicity. And then Soviet historical science once again eliminated this issue and switched back to that version of Anne. Soviet historical science itself was far too ideological. If there was some clearly stated thesis approved by venerable historians of the time, it never became a subject of doubt. Even the attempt to somehow discuss and identify the bones of contention pardon the pun, was perceived as an encroachment on the sacred. 
There was no further and bona fide research conducted in Soviet times. The analysis of the skeleton was conducted in independent Ukraine. In 2009, we did a tomography and laser scan of the skeleton. The recreation of the appearance of the deceased was also planned, but that required a lot of money, so it was postponed until better times. But even the results the scientists already had allowed them to make a bold assumption to be sure the remains in the sarcophagus are those of the wife of Yaroslav the Wise, Ingegerd. Nella Kukavalska went to the Swedish city of Sigtuna with such news. But Russia continued to support the myths of Ingegerd's burial in Novgorod instead of Kyiv in every way possible. I visited Sektuna in the early summer of 2010, and in the fall of the same year, the holy relics of that same Anne were taken from Novgorod to one of the Orthodox churches in Sweden. Do you see the connection? At the time, the pro-Russian government in Ukraine was not interested in a thorough study of the skeletal remains. So that what we started in 2009, we could complete only in 2016. With the financial support of one of the Ukrainian TV channels, the scientists finished what they had started. Thanks to Polish anthropologists, the appearance of the woman had been recreated by their technique, which is well recognized all over the world. It stands next to the sarcophagus today. The discovery made by Ukrainian and Polish scientists might help answer the questions that were the crux of debates held for centuries. In the Soviet times, the knowledge of our genus was being kept a secret. We were people who did not know their roots, so we would like to find our roots through this research and not only here in Ukraine, but across the entire European continent. The two-ton marble lid of the sarcophagus hides a skeleton, which likely belongs to Swedish princess Ingegerd. And with it are mysteries that can only be solved through research, preferably by experts from several countries. Because only then the credibility of the results will be recognized among historians around the world.